Yes, camera settings specifically for stock photography. I know this sounds out there, but stick with me and I'll explain. Stock photography is an interesting genre of photography because it includes portrait photography, landscape photography, product photography, and wildlife. It includes, it encompasses every other photography genre out there. But it's done a little bit differently, and that's because you're using stock photography to advertise. So there's a few key things to keep in mind every time we're shooting for stock photography. The first one I want to talk about is aperture. What aperture is the best for stock photography? Aperture varies by lens. This is a telephoto lens, it's a 70 to 200. It goes as wide as 2.8 and as small at f30 something or f40, I don't know. I never used it that, that small. That's a big range from f2.8 to f40. And then I have this one. This is a wide angle of 15 to 35. And this is an f2.8 to f22. Now, which one, what aperture should you use? When I shoot with the wide angle, if I shoot at 2.8, the corners and the edges look distorted. It's not sharp. Uh, images like these are not gonna get accepted. Stock photography is about sharp, clear, crisp images. These distortions in the corners are not gonna work. You might be able to crop the image, but now you're losing a lot about that photo. And then if I shoot at f22, whatever the smallest aperture is in this lens, the images are gonna be soft and nothing's gonna be in focus. Every lens has a sweet spot and that tends to be somewhere in the middle. So from F2 to F22, let's go right down to F10. And usually anywhere from F8 to F14 is the clearest and sharpest a lens like this is gonna perform. When I talk about the telephoto lens, these are great for products, for people, for portraits, for wildlife, for many things. But again, when you're shooting stock photography, it's not about the model or, or the subject, it's about the whole scene. So if I shoot at 2.8, I'm gonna blur the background and I'm making it all about the model. This totally depends on your composition. It doesn't work for every single picture out there, but I find that anywhere from F8 to F14, again, seems to be the sweet spot that's gonna get more pictures accepted and more pictures sold. If I was shooting for a portrait shoot or something like that, yes, 2.8, wide open aperture, you get more light, it looks softer, it looks great, but uh, stock photography is a little bit different. Keep that in mind. Next point. The next point I want to talk about is your ISO, your light sensitivity, fake light. You're introducing new light. ISO is one of those things that you want to keep as low as possible to get clear, sharp images with low noise. This is digital noise. The more you increase the light sensitivity, you're adding more fake light, but you're also adding noise to your pictures. So the lower you can keep it, the better it's going to be for your images. Now, don't let this stop you. Modern cameras will allow you to go much higher. When I started stock photography, I started with the Canon 7D. This is 10, 12 years ago. <laughs> My limit was about ISO 400. If I went above ISO 400, forget it. I'm never gonna get it accepted. Uh, with this camera, this is the Canon 5D Mark IV. I can go all the way up to 1,000, 1,600 and, and still get sharp, clear images. With the Canon R5, I can go beyond that. But now be careful because this, this also has a lot to do with your subject composition and your shutter speed. As a general rule, yes, keep your ISO as low as possible, but don't miss a shot because you were afraid to pump it up. The next point here is your shutter speed. And now remember, when you're doing stock photography, you want clear, sharp images. If you're hand-holding, you need to know your limits because uh, a slow shutter speed is gonna make your image look soft and blurry. It, it, literally, motion blur, everything's gonna be soft. Just remember to keep your shutter speed fast enough that your subject is clear, or if you're using a slow shutter speed for, for movement, let's say a waterfall, or let's say when you're panning for a car, that's when you slow down your shutter speed and you move with the vehicle or person, uh, that creates a really cool effect. But remember, when you do pictures like this, include that in your title, your description, and your keywords. This is gonna help you generate more sales and get that file accepted. If you don't include, I've had photos rejected because I forgot to include the, the word panning. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if uh, it's AI or real people reviewing images, but by adding the word panning when you use a slow shutter speed or when you're blurring a waterfall, you add, blurred waterfall in the title or description of the image. Uh, this is all with the SEO. I might make a video here in the future, but for now, let me just put it out there. Remember to add this to your keywords, your titles and descriptions. That way the reviewer or the computer, the AI program is gonna know that this photo was shot with intention. Every camera has these, uh, let me switch here in the back. 
the picture styles and if you can see it as I change them it gives me up above it tells me what it's changing I need to get the manual out to understand each one but for example when I shoot in landscape it's gonna enhance the greens and the blues and a little bit more contrast when I shoot for portrait it's gonna remove some of the fine detail and make your faces softer so that it looks uh, more visual more visually pleasing when I shoot in fine detail it's gonna enhance the contrast and the sharpness and sometimes this will hurt your images. If your photo has too much detail or too much sharpness, it's gonna look like it came from a, from a mobile device or a small sensor where everything is super sharp. Remember to keep your picture style either neutral or standard. This will give you more fl flexibility when you're processing in post. And now remember, there's no such thing as an unedited photo. You're either telling your camera how to capture it or the camera is doing it for you. When you shoot in manual, you have a little bit more control, but even something like this fine detail is something that you need to, to tell the camera how to capture it. When you use a cell phone, and, and pay attention next time you go out and you shoot a sunset with a cell phone, I have a lot of people that come over and tell me to look at this picture, it's completely raw out of camera. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as an unedited photo. When you do a sunset with your phone, you can see a big circle uh, a darkened circle. That's because your phone is adding filters to compensate for the for the light, making a more HDR image. So the more control you have over your camera and your manual settings, the better it's going to be in the long run. This also leads to the next point, which is always shoot in RAW. Shooting in RAW is going to give you a lot more flexibility when you're processing images. You're going to get a lot more detail from the shadows or the highlights and you're going to be able to recover a lot of this and also change things like your white balance. If you didn't get it 100% on camera, shooting in RAW is going to enable you to recover and change and modify that picture and process it the way you meant to. Uh, now, if you shoot in RAW, you're going to need a computer program, something like Lightroom or On One or Affinity Pro or just something that's able to open these files and give you the final JPEG to upload to stock. Now, this leads to the next point that's also connected to shooting in RAW and that's not over-processing your images. There's filters, there's presets, there's things that will make you go like, wow, that picture looks awesome, HDR and different things like this. That's not the best thing to sell for stock. Stock photography wants simple, clean, and crisp images. I like the idea of adding contrast, making the colors pop, and making things just a little bit brighter, but don't overdo it. Make sure you keep your photos simple and as real life as possible. This way an editor can add the filters if they want to, or they can process the image as much as they want to. But if we do that, it's gonna be really hard to undo later. My next point is the brightness on the back of your camera screen. Do not get that as bright as it can be. <laughs> Keep it somewhere in the middle and pay attention to your histogram. I've noticed that a lot of the pictures that I sell on stock sites are bright images. They're, they're nice and bright and, and they can catch your eyes. If we go by the screen and we have the screen as bright as it goes, every picture is going to look bright. We put it in the computer. If a computer monitor is set to as bright as it can, then that image is going to look bright. When we upload it, someone with a neutral screen, that image is going to look dim. So make sure you go by the histogram. That's the little graph here that shows you where your shadows and darks and then your highlights. And then some, so if your image is somewhere in the middle or a little bit brighter, that's really going to help. But again, don't go by the, the screen, go by your histogram. I tend to shoot a, a quarter or a third of a stop overexposed. And this has actually helped me a lot because images pop and they look bright. Not to where I'm losing detail, but just a little bit brighter than normal. I have noticed a big increase in not only files accepted, but files sold when they look bright. Because on a grid, your bright files are going to pop more than the other ones. Now, the next and last point of this list is your focal points. <laughs> this is something that I've made mistakes. I've seen, I actually watched one of a great photographer on YouTube make this mistake uh, and it is one of those things that you know most of us don't even pay attention to but you have focal points older cameras uh, DSLRs had most of those points in the middle it was a little triangle like this and you had I don't know 60 points but they were all right in the middle with mirrorless cameras you can go all the way to the edge and most of us I'm sitting right in the middle most of us only tend to use the middle point what this causes is it makes you forget about the rule of thirds that's that grid here. For stock photography, you want your subject to be to a side so you have negative space where you can add text and add whatever you need to advertise. You wanna keep things on the side. So if you choose your focal points, 
on either side and now you have empty space to advertise, that's gonna help you a lot more when you sell pictures. If you notice, my eyes tend to be in the upper third and that's something, again, that I try to do purposely is keep the, the grid, even though I may be in the middle, but my eyes are in the upper third. See, what happens is when you take a picture in the middle, you end up cropping to fix it. And now you're gonna be losing a lot of that detail. If you get it right on camera, that's gonna be a lot better. So remember to play around with the focal points and get the composition as, as best as possible on camera instead of having to fix every image because this is gonna take more time and you're gonna be losing a lot of detail from, from that image. And now to end the video, I'm gonna leave you with one of my favorite quotes and that is discovery requires experimentation. And this is going to take time. This is a quote by Daniel Whitehall and the uh, MCU, the Marvel Comic Universe. This was awesome. And it is true, to learn about different gear, every camera reacts different. The camera R5 with those lenses are gonna be a lot different than the Canon 5D Mark IV. And we need to practice and learn how these how these pieces of equipment work with each other and what the differences are. To discover these things, you have to make a lot of experiments. I encourage you to go outside and change all your settings when you're doing a photo shoot. Try different apertures, different shutter speeds. Try different settings and learn about the gear that you're using. This is gonna help you in your future as a photographer. And with that, guys, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.